Oh, no, you didn't. Oh. We wanted to end this one on a super rad coin. Super high note. Yeah, exactly. Kikokuru. Kiko Come on. Kuru. Oh, Can we just say right. all of the above on the on this one? Yeah, this is this is I, I have <laughs> as we break this down is probably when I'm gonna be making my decision about which koi I choose because right. these are all rad. Because you don't even know yet, right? No idea. <laughs> Super hot. So where are these coming from? Morosaka? Okay. Uh yeah, so this Kikokuru and this Kikokuru are from Morosaka. This one is uh, from my main man Hide Igarashi. Igarashi is also a Kikokuru breeder. Okay. Um so we have uh, we have, and you can kind of tell, you know, there's different feeding regimen at their farm because they're all two-year-olds. This one's, you know, a little bit smaller. Um, not necessarily because the fish won't grow small, just uh, different, you know, different feeding schedules and things like that. Right. And so we don't know what they're male or female yet, of course, right? Don't know, yeah. Just stuff? Okay. Yep. Uh, let's dive right into this. Let's talk about this Kikokuru here. You know, all, all three of these are completely different from each other. Um, this Kikokuru's uh, tonality or color is a sort of a light lemon um, compared to like a deeper orange. Um, stuff like that in the in the show world as far as the coloration of a Kikokuru mm, it doesn't matter at all. There's not a particular color in there's not a particular color that's better than another. And I get that question all the time, like, oh, well, should I get a dark red or should I get a yellow? What what do koi judges care about? Yeah, and that's really you know your preference. Uh, and I won't say that judges don't have preferences, right. but it's not a, it's not a by the book type thing. That gunmetal is super cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, the parts to Kikokuru that you enjoy is that sort of platinum body, that platinum base, um, and then sort of that kind of like a Harawaki pattern, right? Yeah. Uh, and then you have this sort of the Kikokuru that, that just like you talked about that gunmetal or that chrome kind of finish on top, um, and this. This particular one has a really, really cool, just balanced, even sort of shadow on the top. Uh, something that's real important to remember, Kikokuru, they change all the time, right? So uh, what looks okay. like this now might change quite a bit in, um, you know, next year or next, next summer even. Well, let's um, talk about that real quick because mm -hmm. as a Kikokuru, of course, Ru means dragon, right? Right, right. And um, so to explain a little bit about that color, because people, this is a great fish, I don't think people know enough about this fish. Yeah, sure. So this is the metallic version of the Kumandru. Kumandru is an uh, awesome variety. It's a black-white um, koi uh, named after the Dragon of Nine Clouds. And the Dragon of Nine Clouds uh, is this awesome story about this black dragon like racing through the sky. Hey, babe, we shouldn't do that. Don't talk about that story yet. We gotta no. save it for Kumandru. Oh, save it for Kumandru? Save it for Kumandru. Okay, all right, all right. Keep these people waiting all for right. you. Sounds okay. cool, sounds cool. But but the black in that changes, right? Yeah, absolutely. The, the point is, uh, the black is very unstable. So in the, in the winter months, and I, I don't say always, but typically in the winter months, these koi darken up, right? Uh, and then in the summer months, that, that sort of black, well, can disappear, and this could be this could be a solid white and a yellow koi. Not likely. Uh, it'll most likely keep sort of that sort of metallic finish on the face, that dark on the face. But this could all disappear during the summer, and who knows? Maybe in February, March, this koi has really, really deep dark black. Comes back in, right? Yeah, exactly. And so exactly. the viewer should know that we are in the winter right now. Correct. You know, it's Southern California. It's not that cold, but it you is winter it. for us. Okay. Right. All right, so let's carry on now. I wanted to make sure people understood that that quality. Awesome, yeah. So number one here, we have a, have this guy here. It has a really nice, even finish. Really, really like it. Interesting pattern. I love like the symmetry between these two spots here. Um, again, we're not looking for a traditional kwaku pattern. I mean, it's okay if it has a traditional kwaku pattern, but because yeah. it's Deutz, it's you know anything goes. Game. Anything goes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, then, number two, uh, we have the other Marasaka Kikokuru. It's a completely different tone and color that we see. Uh, and also, um, uh, when I say the tone and color, I'm talking about like the orange here compared to yellow. Um, also, it has a different kind of a sumi development or a sort of a gunmetal development where this is um, kind of polished and smeared all the way through. Here, it's a little bit more distinctive on where it's going to show up. Uh, this could be a you know, this, this fish is kind of a wild card. I have no idea how it's going to develop here, but if it develops in a real strong black pattern, it's going to be really, really cool looking. Epic um, looking, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like these nice, thick, nice, dark spots. 
So uh, again, uh, also, since we're looking at that sort of platinum body, it has a really, really nice, it's clean platinum. Um, it's very, very pretty fish. I love how the face has all three colors, like pretty well pronounced in it. Exactly, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and something that's kind of interesting that the other that the other ones don't have, uh, this has a little bit of scalation, which goes down the dorsal, and then there's a couple little scales down here. Um, that's probably not ideal, but it, because we're talking again about Kiko Kuru, it's pretty interesting looking. Yeah, it's still considered adome, right? I mean, it's like a one scale of adome. Like, yeah, sure, right? sure, sure. Yeah, adome is just that that spot right at the that end of the end, tail, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And then the final coil that we have is the uh, Igarashi Kiko Kuru. Um, so this one looks significantly different from the others. Um, it has a again that really rich, deep, like orange color. If you notice that orange is completely even all the way through, it's all like uniform as far as the color goes. But it's in, in a different stage of development. Like uh, the black is a lot more pronounced um, than on these on these other two. Um, so yeah, there's a really kind of cool pattern that goes from the eyes that connects to the nose and then goes back to the other eye it's very it, it's crazy to me how symmetrical that that uh that can look also the face pattern is really really neat definitely um uh since we're on the topic of these guys i mm -hmm. want to i want to ask about um will, will that will the black ever finish and like hold you say it's changing you know when the weather changes can we expect that throughout its entire life or will they ever just like finish and like i'm done changing yeah so uh so there's, there's two answers to that. Um, I would definitely say as, as a fish gets uh, mature, you know, when we're talking like five, six years old, generally the changes are going to be a lot less significant. So you might get some changing here and there, but it, it will tend to hold the, that black longer. And that's something that has developed over the years of breeding these koi. So, um, you know, in, in they're a They're more former, stable as they get older? Uh, yeah, they're more stable as they get older. and. Uh, the longer that these koi are produced. So remember we talked about in Goshiki how uh, some of the original Goshiki changed colors quite a bit between summer and spring. Right. And now we don't see that at all. We see a very stable Goshiki pattern. I think Kikokuru, um, you know, in the next 10 years or so, are you're, you're going to have a much more stable pattern in them. And that's just through breeding and bloodlines, things like that. That's good to know. Yeah. All right, well... <clears throat> Before you tell us the details of this, yeah. what I want to do is I want to close this video out today because we're running out of time. And of course, we're, I, I imagine we're going to do many of these, but um, I want to talk to the viewers for a second about that before sure. we show you this fish. If you guys are enjoying this, trying to, to learn, to look through the eyes of this brilliant koi guy, um, you're going to have to jump into the comments and type in there how you feel about this new playlist, this new series that we're doing. And uh, we want you to try and guess which one you would choose that you think he's going to choose because he's throwing some curveballs at us, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not curveballs, it's just his experience, his years. Uh, we just take him as curveballs. So right now, let's, we want you to jump to the comments and type in now before you watch the rest of the video which one you think he's going to choose and then you can carry on because we're going to reveal which one he did right now. Uh, again, let's talk about the numbers again. This one's number one, correct? Right. So this is number one. Marasaka, like lighter yellow color. The, the lighter yellow one. Right. Number two is the has a little more orange. Right. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. And number three is uh, tell me his, his name again. Uh, Igarashi. Igarashi. I just love saying that. Okay, Igarashi. And those are the three. One, two, or three. Yeah. 